Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I thank the witnesses. Um, I have a question, and I won't, really want the young people here to, to, to answer this mentally anyway, but uh, has the Sahara always been a desert? Dr. Spinrad? I was going to ask the younger people. Um, well, I, I, I think, depending on how you define always, obviously, if we go back in geological Oh, no, time, I'm asking you, has it always been a desert? It, it either has or it hasn't. I'm sure in geological time there was a period when it was not. How long ago was that? I don't know the answer to that. How about you? Uh, I'm not a scientist. I wouldn't hazard a guess. I you're not a wrong. scientist? No. Most of the people asking questions here aren't either. Uh, the answer is the Sahara was a lush uh, area uh, populated by the Nubian and Egyptian cultures. Uh, there was farming. Uh, uh, there were lakes and rivers and streams, and it was only about 5,000 years ago. I mean, a literal blink in uh, geologic time. Uh, it started becoming desert somewhere between 10 and, and 12,000 years ago. Again, a literal blink in geologic time. This is important for you to understand this because there are decisions being made based on, on climate science. It's based on models that the vast majority of mo models are totally inaccurate. Uh, they have to um, manipulate the models to, to get to some of the conclusions that they draw. And as a result, your parents are, and you are paying six, seven dollars, eight dollars a gallon for gas. You're, you're going to be paying that for a gallon of milk, for a loaf of bread. Uh, we're experiencing uh, highest inflation we've seen in 40 years. There are consequences for the decisions that are being made by my colleagues in Congress and, and by the Biden administration. And I understand that the climate's changing, and the reason I bring up the Sahara Desert, because that's an example of climate change. And I, I know I, you won't know the answer if I ask you what caused that, but most scientists believe it's because the Earth changed its tilt on its axis. And as a result, the wind patterns changed, and over time, the Sahara became a desert. Now, like I said, they're, they're excavating Nubian and Egyptian settlements there. They are, you've got the archaeological data to, to look at. And what I like to point out to people is if the Nubians and Egyptians had had the same desalinization technology and irrigation technology that Israel uses today, there'd still be people living in the Sahara, farming and, and you know, playing sports, driving cars. I know that, that drives my friends crazy, but... We need to be talking about adaptation and mitigation. And, uh, and uh, Chairman Castor, I, I'm, I'm going to admit something I, it's hard for me to do, but uh, human activity actually has had an impact on uh, uh, tropical uh, storms in the Atlantic. Uh, there, and it's a, rep it's a study from NOAA uh, that, that indicates that uh, the reduction of particulate air pollution in Europe and North America has contributed to an increase and the number of tropical cyclones in, in the North Atlantic. Isn't that interesting that we've cleaned up the air and it's resulted in, in more storms? So uh, human activity does impact the climate. But what I, I know you brought these young people in here for a reason. I want you to understand that there's more to the story than you're getting. I, I highly recommend a book by Dr. Uh, Kristen Peters, uh, PhD from Harvard, a geologist, it's called The Whole Story of Climate. And you need to understand this, and, and my colleague from, uh, uh, mentioned sea level rise and the potential of them buying a home in Louisiana, and I know my colleague, Mr. Graves, would, would really encourage that. But during the Emian period, you've got, we're, we're right at the end of the, the Hellocene period or, the, or, or what's known as the Sub-Atlantic period. But during the Emian period, it was considerably warmer. And you look at, at the geologic evidence and you can see there are higher concentrations of CO2, higher concentrations of methane, as, as you've pointed out. But uh, during that period, the shoreline in Georgia, North Carolina was about 50 miles further inland and about 120 feet higher. Uh, two thirds of Alabama was underwater. All of Florida was underwater. Most of Louisiana was underwater. A huge portion of Texas, all the way up into Oklahoma uh, and, and, and uh, into the Midwest was underwater because the climate changed. It changed again. The sea, sea levels receded. 
there's a whole lot more to this than what you're being told. And I highly encourage you to take the time to study this for yourself. Get the whole story. I yield back. Next up.